Hello, good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope everybody is doing wonderful this morning. Um, it is a beautiful day. A little chilly, but for the most part, it's it's a good day for sure. So, um, I want to talk about something that I think is very important that we need to pay um, a lot of attention to. Um, I first want to say that, you know, one of the things about relationships, love, parenting, um, work environment, all of those things, um, all involve you. <laughs> so we can't escape making sure we are mindful of self, okay? Um, I have a post going right now talking and discussing about keeping records of wrongs. The issue with keeping record of wrongs really puts us in a space of being judgmental in relationships, right? And that could be any relationship. I'm talking intimate relationships today, but it even applies to work relationships. It also applies to parenting. I mean, just all kinds of relationships that we have a tendency to be um, keeping track of wrongs, right? So I'm going to use as an example um, one of the ways that I know for a fact, without a shadow of a doubt, that a relationship or a love relationship is out of balance with self when a person comes to me and wants sessions and wants to really work on their self. When they come to me and they start listing all the things wrong with somebody else. Now, this can be in a love relationship. It could be their husband, their lover, their spouse. It could be their, their, uh, the person's significant other in their life. It could be also their child. It could be a co-worker. It could be someone that's, you know, you are over. A, it doesn't matter. If I hear as soon as someone comes to me for coaching and they start giving me the list, as to why um, or what someone has done to them or what they have done in their own actions that they see as wrong, I know for 100% certainty that their love for self is out of balance. I'm going to tell you why. A lot of times when we are spending an immense amount of time focused on somebody else's actions, whether it's your child, whether it's your mate, whether it's your your boss whether whomever it is when you're spending a lot of time looking at that other person okay and focusing on what they're doing what they're not doing how they did this how they did that all of which can be accurate all of which can be true but when you spend so much time looking at someone else you're really not spending enough time focusing on you focusing on what you can do to improve self see love relationships and i know everybody comes to me coach i want a relationship or coach i'm in a relationship or coach i need i need this going on in my relationship this is lacking this is lacking and all kinds of reasons why their relationship isn't to the level of intimacy that they want they constantly try to tell me everything going wrong with that other person now here's the thing i don't start off by being critical of them for being critical of their lover or being critical of their child because that's their reality. That's what they see. That's what they notice. That's what they seem to think about the most. And see, when, when a client comes to me, what they talk about is what they think about. It's what it is. What they talk about is what they think about. So if you're thinking about most of the time, you're thinking about what your lover is or is not doing or what your kid is or is not doing or whomever that's in your life, you're spending a lot of time focusing on their actions and things that they've done to disappoint you, things that they've done that's not enough for you. All of those things begin to take a huge amount of real estate from your own mind of your own self. And this is why love relationships become out of balance. This is why people begin to fall out of love with their lover. This is when people, ladies especially, come to me and say, I've outgrown my partner. I, I, I've I've lost myself. I've had a lot of clients tell me they've lost themselves. How, right? How do we lose self? <laughs> we can't do this. We 
can't lose ourselves. But when we do, how does that happen? And a lot of times we're not discussing how we've lost self in a love relationship. Nine times out of 10, our focus is because our focus is mainly on them, number one. And the other thing is we make our lover our life. I'm going to say that again. We make our lover our life. Even some parents make their children their life. They make that job or that environment their life. But once something happens to where that other person or the, that circumstance starts to shift and change and disappoint or cause you to feel uncomfortable, what happens then is that life starts to get shaky. You're starting to feel uncomfortable. You're starting to get angry and upset because of actions you're feeling that are, it, 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 basically it's impacting your peace. But that's because that person, those people, this circumstance is taking on way too much of your energy for self. See, when we keep record of what our lover is doing and not doing, it's, it's not love. First of all, it's not loving your partner because when you keep track of all that stuff and you keep saying, well, you're doing this and you're doing that and you didn't do this for me and I wish you would be, do this and why haven't you done that? A lot of that stuff, I'm telling you, is killing the intimacy. Your relationship, your love relationship, your, your marriage, your, your affair that you're having with this person is being destroyed by your constant focus on what they're not doing. And I constantly tell my clients, as much as I, I try to be as raw as I can, but I also try to be as loving as I can in the same way, okay? I have to tell them, you can't control that person. You can't control your lover. Hell, you can't control your kids half the time. And we definitely can't control our pets, right? We got pets, we got plants. We have a lot of things outside of ourselves that we have absolutely no control over. No matter how much water, how much sunlight you give a plant, if that plant is not growing, it's not growing What? no matter what you put in it. Same with pets. I have a pet, a dog named Marley. Marley's my heart. Love him dearly, but Marley makes mistakes a lot. He might pee somewhere. He ain't got no business peeing on. It's like, Marley, why would you do that? I might let him out in the back. Okay, and, and send him out on his way and be all very excited about him going out in the back and then may walk away from the door for a minute because I got something that came up or somebody's at the door or, some, or I get distracted. Next thing I know, Marley has already ran down the street. I can't find Marley. I'm thinking, where's Marley at? I told his little furry self to be in the back. But does he stay there? No. As soon as he looked and saw I wasn't at the door, he's gone. So I can't even control my pets. What makes us think we can control our mate? What makes us think we can control our wife, our husband, our spouse? We can't. It's impossible to, to really control a whole other human being. You can't, you can't control them. But what you can do is you can love them through their challenges, their, 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 their mishaps, their mistakes. You can love them through it. You can really help to hold them in honor when they do things right, when you are frustrated by what your mate's not doing, a lot of times we just start killing them. We start killing them. And what I mean by killing them, we start killing their spirit. I, I, I could tell you, I had a client that was a stepfather, okay, as an example. He was a stepfather. And I asked him, I said, did you commit to being a stepfather or not? I mean, did you really connect connect, and commit in your heart to be this? Because you inherited a child when you got married. He was like, well, you know, I never even really thought about it. Okay, but now when you reprimand this child, you are a big bad wolf to him. He sees you as a big bad wolf. Every time you get reprimand him or, or tell him or use discipline, he only sees you in the light of being mean to him. You have, you have now created... A, a resonance with this child that you're a big bad wolf. You need to change that. If you're wanting to be a parent, then you need to be a parent. And parents have good days. We got bad days. We got times we, we, we restrict and limit them to, to 
benefits. We have times that we allow them to have all kinds of, you know, perks. This is part of parenting. It's the same thing in relationships. We can't escape who we are in our love relationships. The way we parent is the way we are in our relationships. Guaranteed. So when, you're, when your child is stiffening up every time you call his name, it's telling me that that child fears what you're going to say. When you're in a love relationship and you're in a love relationship with your man and your lover, you'll see, I'm telling you, you'll see that whenever you say his name, he's going to feel like, oh God, what is it now? What's she about to tell me? What's he about to say? Oh my God, what is it? That energy has been something you developed through your constant counting of things he or she does wrong. In order for someone to make a change in love, you have to first make a change in you. That part you can't skip. A lot of people don't want to talk about self-love once they get in love. Because they're like, oh, what does that have to do with my love relationship with my man? I love him. I want him to be my all. It's like, okay, I get it. That's wonderful with everything. But that may can't be your all. And you're not doing anything to make sure you're good. We don't take enough time to learn what we need as, as far as individually. Yes, you have a love relationship. Yes, you have somebody you care about and you're excited about being in a relationship with. And all of that, but that starts to fizzle and fade through the years, especially long term, when you're focusing on what I don't have with this person. I don't have, matter of fact, let me tell you something. This is really deep. A lot of sexless, loveless marriages and relationships come from, heed this, I want y'all to get this. It's very vital and important. I know somebody's out there and this is going to help them. When you have sexless, loveless relationships, it's because of this main ingredient. And nine times out of ten, it's because in your being or in your resonance, you tend to find yourself nagging a lot, feeling out of control a lot. Feeling like you need to have to make sure that things are in place the way you want them to be in place. But you're not understanding this is a whole other individual involved with you. Besides this. Besides you. You can't control someone else. And this is why we get so frustrated. Sexless, loveless marriages and relationships come because the intimacy is capped off. Nine times out of ten because someone is being a critique. Someone is being very critical. Someone is constantly focusing on what that love is not giving them rather than seeing what they can give themselves. And then holding, in, holding their lover or their mate or their husband or wife in, in a higher regard. You know how I can tell when a parent has a disruly or unruly child? They come to me and tell me everything that child does wrong before I even meet the child. I'm like, really? And then when I prick and prod from them, well, what does this child do right? And they give me the little tiny list about this big as to what they do right. I'm like, okay. Do you realize as a parent, and I tell my clients this all the time, do you realize as a parent, you're at a girl's and you're doing a great job and I'm proud of you and all of those words of affirmations, do you realize those words and that energy behind those words are even more powerful than I love you? Applies in love, people. When you tell your mate, I love you, that's a beautiful thing. It's felt, yes. But when you tell them you mean a lot to me, what you do for me in my life is important, I acknowledge what you do well, it changes and shifts a love relationship out of, it, out of its, its stagnation, out of its sexlessness. Out of its loveless, it takes that relationship into a newfound bound that you can't even imagine how much it does. Because a lot of times people don't affirm to their lover, I appreciate you. I appreciate you being here. That, that doesn't happen until they're in ICU or they're getting ready to go on a flight and they don't know if they're going to see them again. That's the only time people want to acknowledge the good in the lover. If you're not acknowledging besides just what you get from your love affair or for your, from your lover, you're not in balance. And I'm not talking about imbalance within the love affair. You're not in balance with you, the love for you. 
what are you doing for you what are you are you making more demands on your lover to be something that they're not if you've been in a love relationship a long time you know what their positives and negatives are you nine times out of ten know they can provide certain things and certain things they cannot so in that understanding and knowledge that's when you take that information and that knowledge and you you begin to apply it to the love relationship and then you begin to find more admiration for what they do positive am i making sense does that make sense to you when you when you reaffirm good behaviors in love you get more good behaviors happening because there's a there's an affirmation but it's got to be authentic you can't just be like, okay, you did a good job, great, I'm glad. And you really don't mean it. I'm telling you, this is why sexless, loveless relationships are developed. Because there's too much going on with I'm not happy and it's because of you that's going on. When we, when we, when we actually focus on someone else making us happy, will forever we will forever be unhappy that's something that someone else can't take on only you know what you really want only you know what makes you fulfilled but do you because if you don't that means you're not in, in in tune with what you need inside to feel fulfilled nobody else can give that to you like i said earlier you can't control somebody else but what you can control is you you can control certain things that bother you about certain things. You can say, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let this bother me anymore. I'm, I'm to the point now where I feel like I can make a difference, not just in this love relationship, but to myself. I can get more purposeful. What am I here to do while I'm here on the planet? We got a debt. You know that, right? You know while you're here, you've got a debt to pay. You're here for a reason. You weren't just born for nothing. You were born to be the best significant you you're supposed to be supreme in your being but you can't be if you're spending more time focusing on what this man or what this woman is not doing for you or what your lovers aren't providing for you that's not their job and a lot of times we're in love relationships and we put a lot of pressure on what we expect from our love affairs we want them to do certain things for us. We want them to apply certain things to make us happy. That is not their job. Their job is to make sure they maintain themselves. And you are supposed to maintain yourself. And in that, once you connect and become one, you de develop into a newfound intimacy. Because you're allowing each other to have that scope of thought. When you stop making somebody priority and you start making yourself priority, a lot of times the relationship starts to change dramatically because your focus is no longer on what what they're not doing i hope i help somebody today listen i'm a coach if you guys need help with this inbox me i am really at this point i am really trying to restore and renew not just love relationships but also restore and renew people's love for self because no matter if your relationship is out of bounds your relationship is not here where it used to be your relationship is is feeling like uh, uh uh it's feeling too clingy or it's feeling like it's closed off or i'm not connecting with this person a lot of times it's because of lack of self-love and self-regard we're not regarding self and then we're spending too much time judging and looking down our nose at what our partner's not doing and when we do this it kills intimacy almost instantly are you nagging him? Are you telling him what he can and can't do? Are you nagging her and telling her she got to be here, do this and do that? You can't control another human being, but who you can control is you. I hope I help somebody today. If you need to get a hold of me, inbox me. I'm just a, I'm just an inbox away. Inbox me. Or if you want to call me, you know, you want to talk to me about, you know, can I be, can, can you coach me, coach? Because this is me. Call me, 1-844-5-WISDOM, extension zero. Very easy to remember, 844-5-WISDOM, and I can help you get through this. But at the end of the day, we have to stop making it about someone else and start looking at self. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I hope I helped you today. Make sure you share this video. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Bye, guys.